Coach Mark Haywald, the head wrestling coach for John Carroll. The John Carroll Blue Streaks. I got that right, didn't I, Coach? Yes. And uh, the coaching journey for you so far has been Mount Union in uh, Alliance, Ohio, and then up to Cleveland, Ohio, to Case Western Reserve, right? Mm, that's right, yes. And now you're alma mater where you were an All-American. Uh, the Blue Streaks of John Carroll. And John Carroll is at University Heights? Yeah, University Heights, yep. How far is John Carroll from Notre Dame College? I, th I think it's like two miles. I, th I thought it was closer for some reason. Seems real close when you're in a Two miles is pretty close. I mean, yeah, you, you go two turns, turn on Cedar, turn on Green. You're there. So it's super close there. And then um, you border Beachwood, right? Yeah, we border Beachwood, yeah. So Yeah, and when I was in grad school, I was in grad school at John Carroll and a, a coach at Notre Dame. So that's how close. So I literally went to school. I worked at John Carroll, coached at Notre Dame, and then would go to school at night at, at John Carroll. So that's, that's how wild. close they are. Uh, what grad degree did you get? That was my uh, MBA. Okay, so you got a master's in business. Um, so your dad was NCAA champion for the Blue Streaks twice. Twice, seventy five, seventy six. And then your dad was in this awesome, amazing golden era where the D three champs could go Russell in the D one championships, right? Yeah, he went twice. And how did he do in the D ones when he would when he went? Uh the, he was fifth his senior year, and then the year before he didn't place. So I think he won a match or two. So your dad was a <laughs> a D one All American and a D three national champ in the same year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in it was. I don't don't quote me on this, but you won't fact be able to fact check me either. But <laughs> I think it was the next week. So imagine wrestling. Oh yeah, no, that's that's how it went. It was the yeah. exact no that that's not the national. That is what they did. And then you know you're talking when I say the next week, that means you're done Saturday night and you're wrestling again Thursday morning. <laughs> so wild, man! Crazy, when so Denver wild. Went. And they drove to everything then too. Probably it was, and it was probably they did West Coast uh, locations then at that point too. He may have wrestled at Arizona one of those years, dude. That's so wild because you know they drove. You just know well, that you know they tell stories. I'll hear stories about stuff when when like you would drive yourself. Like you, you know, you're like a young young guy. It's like, hey, uh, you guys, you got a car, you take him, him, and him. Here's the address for the hotel. See you there. <laughs> that that so, blows uh, uh I was talking to the uh Oregon State guys. I remember being out there. Um and it was um, they were talking about old, old school in the eighties, seventies, and eighties. Um, they would go on month long van. <laughs> they would go for a month or six weeks, and they would drive everywhere and they'd wrestle in like six or eight events, and then they would just come back to campus because that was like when they were on quarters and they got this crazy like six week vacation. Do you remember? Because Ohio State used to be on quarters. Yeah. Ohio, you used to be on quarters. Oregon State used to be on quarters. These guys would tell me this, and they would, um, yeah, they'd, they'd be having finals like right now, and then they'd come back yeah, in January. Yeah, yes, that's exactly yeah. it. Um, it, so, 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 yeah. When my dad, um, they would go to Florida every year, which we still do, which is pretty cool. So I'm pretty sure same thing. They'd leave for for Christmas break. And they would just say like, all right, be in Florida at this place at this date. And you just met there. And then they would be there for, I mean, when you hear the stories, you think they were there for a month, but like they would literally get jobs <laughs> while they were there <laughs> and they would have, so they would just wake up, you know, run on the beach and stuff. They'd have a place to wrestle and they get jobs. Like uh, they, they said they like were bouncers and stuff. Um, and then like, they'd find like odd, like construction jobs for like three days. <laughs> So just, yeah, yeah. So Can't do that now. Their coach at the time was Dale Thomas. The wrestling room's named after Dale Thomas at Oregon State. But these guys who are all, co they're high school coaches at like Roseburg, Oregon. Um, man, there was a couple different coaches I talked to. 
And they 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 did these crazy long five, four, five, six weeks uh road trips. Because or you know, it's in Corvallis, Oregon, it's on the oh, west. Yeah, yeah. And they would they would just go and travel and Dale Thomas would give them like per diem. They'd eat in the bar, they'd be on in the van. <laughs> it's it was, it's what's really crazy is you think that this was this was young kids doing this and they had no cell phone. Um, yeah. How'd you survive without a cell? How'd you yeah, and through? they had map, like they literally had road maps. Yes. <laughs> and dude, the thing about them is they're driving through crazy mountain passes and stuff out yeah. there. They're driving through the Cascades, the Sierra Nevadas, the Rockies. I mean, they're because it's wrestling season. And my brother and I took a uh, we took a uh, our first like road trip. I guess we we flew into Denver. And it was April, right? I remember I had an April spring break. We couldn't get through the Rocky Mountains through the routed roads that we wanted to because the passes were closed. Because it because of snow. April, dude. April. <laughs> April. And I was like, oh my God, this is wild. So, like, that's thinking about what you know Dale Thomas had to do with those guys. Um, and probably what a lot of the California teams had to do, because they had to cross. Geez, a peach, they had to cross the the the, the uh, Sierra Nevadas. I mean, dude, the California teams, Stanford, Cal Poly, Bakersfield, a lot of them would have to pass the – they'd have to go to the Donner Pass. What's that? That's the Donners ate each other. Oh. Uh, that's They're the ones who got stuck in the Sierra Nevadas. Wait, the hills have eyes? No, 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 no. <laughs> Donners – Literally, were going. They were. Oh, I know what you're saying. George Donner took up an expedition, and they took a long cut, as I like to call it, what they thought was a shortcut, and it dumped like five feet of snow on them in the middle of the night. You literally have to go <laughs> through the Donner Pass to get out. That's crazy. Yeah. No. Yeah. To yeah, get. We, to yeah, the we have we have probably ten ten schools within an hour and a half of us where we could go wrestle. You know, here in Northeast Ohio, just. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the wild thing about it. Like, we're in the hotbed right here, right? Like, I just went over and um, did the Finley Open. My nephew wrestled in the Finley Open, and I did some matches while I was there and just, you know, did as much stuff as I could. And it was wild. I'm thinking, I'm like, why did I come over here? Why did I come over to the Flatland? Everybody should just come, and we should make a neutral location, right? We should do a John Carroll, Notre Dame College, Lake Erie College. Um, you know, Gannon's right here. Obviously, Mercyhurst is right here within an hour and 20 minutes, right? Like, it's all right here. For sure. It's so awesome. I love it. And that's, like, my big thing is I just – I love being able to go to the, everything that I can go to, right? Like, all the dual meets. And I'm home at night, right? I don't have to travel and do a bunch of crazy stuff. I'm just not doing that anymore, you know? Um, I'm trying to catch one of your duels. That's why I was asking you the other oh, day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, you should have came out to November 1. So uh... – no, November 1st was our first ever uh, duel, women's duel. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. We're going to get into talking about the yeah, yeah. of a women's program, coaching, building a roster and all those things. Um, But you're not the head women's coach, correct? So, so we, we have titles, we, you know, the titles are, our our actions are, are more fluid and, and we're collaborative, but technically I am the head men's and women's coach. Um, Autumn, uh, Tomasello, formerly Autumn Gordon, is the associate head women's coach, um, and really we just we're, we're we're a pretty dynamic group, I'd say, our team, the two of us. We don't really, yeah, technically I am her boss, but we don't really operate that way. We were pretty pretty collaborative, um, and really the the design was to, for the most part, benefit the women's team because you know, I'm only human. If I was the head men's coach, director of wrestling and head men's coach, and she reported to me and I had nothing to do with that team, they're essentially not my problem, you know, and I don't want to sound crude, but that's just, that's right. You're, if you're the men's basketball coach, the, the women's team isn't your concern or vice versa. But, but in, in the design from the start, I thought this was important because I felt that was the only way we could truly run the women's program right at least from the start this could evolve and in in the future um she may just be doing it by herself but i don't i don't know i don't want to give it up i love i love working with the women's team so 
if anything, I might switch to her assistant. <laughs> so, uh, but, but right now, I mean, like I said, it's collaborative. She runs, she does most of the recruiting. She runs, we're pretty 50, 50 on practice, I'd say, but she, she runs, you know, a good chunk of it, of course. So you're born and bred John Carroll wrestling, you know, you're a family legacy. Your dad is one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the program, right? He's a multiple time national champion at the D three level. He's a D one all American, you know, when I think of it, I'm like, I have interviewed your dad, you know, 10 plus years ago at a dual meet um, I did there and you were actually coaching at Mount union at the time. And I just think, you know, Haywald, the name Haywald is John Carroll wrestling to me. Um, what's it like being a, a legacy person, a multi-generational person who has wrestled and now you have sons of your own and you know, whether they're going to end up at John Carroll or not, you know, that remains to be seen. They wrestle, you know, but what's it like being a multi-generational person and like, the the first family in my opinion of John Carroll wrestling what's that like for you uh I mean I, I love it uh it, it's it's interesting you know in life you can go a lot of directions um you can branch out and and do your own thing but you know I I never I never left right I grew up in Solon with the John Carroll that that didn't bother me you know I had people who like you know give me a hard time like oh like, you know, you're not going to go away to school. I'm like, no, I, I found a good place. I like it. I'm comfortable. You know, I'm, I, I love what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I embrace that. It's part of, it's part of my, my, my story. It's who I am. I, you know, my mom and dad met on the gym floor essentially, right. You know, at where, where I work and I literally walk by that space almost, almost daily. Uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's just cool to me. I mean, and, and my dad won his national title, his first one, on that same gym floor. I mean, we, they hosted the nationals in 1975. He was a national champ. The team won a title. Um, you know, it's just, it's just wild. Yeah. That I got to compete there that my, my grandmother watched my dad compete there. She, she was like kind of my biggest fan and she watched me compete there. You know, that's just, that's cool. Um, you know, I'm kind of, kind of isolated that I've never ventured further than 20 miles from home I, other than a short stint at Mount Union but no I, I love that it's 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 who I am and I really enjoy it yeah the, the program you did like I said you bounced around to, to three Northeast Ohio Division three programs um obviously the goal and the eye on the prize was the prize was John Carroll being the head coach for the Blue Streaks uh and and coach Volkman did coach Volkman coach your dad and you no, just, just me. So, okay. so DeCarlo started it like 60, I should know the 63, 64. And then Volkman took over, I believe in 89. And then I took over in 15. So I'm the third coach, which yeah. is, that's like a crazy stat in itself. Cause you know, there's places that have had three coaches in five years and we've had three coaches in, in over 50 years. Yeah. Well, like that, that's exactly what um, cases, right. Cases in that, that situation where they've had, three head coaches in five years, right? Yeah. 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 I guess to that point, right. For sure. Yeah. I wasn't thinking of them, but yeah, for sure. I mean, there's probably a couple in Ohio, others in Ohio, but yeah. Notre Dame, Notre Dame has had, had that many in the last five years or not. Yep, Notre Dame. Um, yeah. Notre Dame has and Lake Erie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right down the road, three schools. Yep. So yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about being in the hotbed, you're in Northeast Ohio. You went to one of the I would say a top 20 school, historically speaking, high school wise, if we're talking about the history of OHSAA wrestling, some all time greats have come out of Solon. Right. And, um, you, you know, you live in Solon now, right? I do. <laughs> uh, but you know, being in Northeast Ohio, what's it mean to being born, raised, and now raising your kids here in Northeast Ohio, you know, you're the legacy of John Carroll. My dad met on the gym floor. Dad won an NCAA <laughs> title on the gym floor. But what's it like to be back in your hometown? You know, it's not like you live out here by me. And uh, I think your parents live out by they me. They do. They live in Bainbridge. They live yeah. in Bainbridge. I I live in Auburn. Let's get that straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are fighting words. I'm not allowed <laughs> to talk about that like that out here. Um, I had to tell the other lady the other day, the lady, I was like, uh, she was reading my license to vote. And it says Chagrin Falls. Oh, yeah. It's Auburn Township. It's yeah, Auburn. Yeah. The lady laughed at me and she handed it back and handed me my voting stuff. <laughs> so it's like it gets a little it gets a little weird out here with that. But you're you didn't you're not out here, right? You're you're where you were raised. And what's it like to be in the hometown? And will the boys go to Solon? Do they go to Solon? 
Yeah, they're at they're at Solon. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love it. Uh, it's, it's the same kind of thing, you know. And Solon's really weird because a lot of people live here who, um, like, I'll see people out like at like uh, Giant Eagle or whatever, you know. And I'm like, I know I don't know that person, but I know them, right? Like, I'm like that person, you know. I may not have seen them for 20 years, but I'm like, I went to high school. Who is that for? You know, there's just and then friends, families, like people stick around, and it's a, it's a good school district. Um, it's can now I'm like a, doing a soul and sales pitch here. Uh, <laughs> good good community services, uh, uh, you know, all that stuff. It's it's an awesome place, convenient to everywhere. So I I love soul and not not a not a bad commute over to uh john carroll either so and I, I i'm in the i'm in what i call the wrong side of the tracks of Solon. i'm in kind of the uh the hillbillies part of town so we got we got a little bit of a uh you know some property if you will we're not not we have a couple acres in Solon, which is nice which is not too common here okay i take my kids to goldfish school in warrensville heights and we always go up is that lee road uh that's that's uh richmond road on goldfish richmond road. what is the road there's a road that connects it's not 91 it's the road after 91 that runs parallel with 91 what is that it runs parallel with 91 that's harper harper road. harper harper's got <laughs> some properties with huge they've got big lots are you on i'm on road? brainerd road you probably You're passed brainerd, my house okay. what's that you probably passed my house you get off at harper Go down Cannon, go down Brainerd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Richmond. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's but the the ones on Harper, there's some big properties, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Go down Brainerd. Look to your right for the, the big red barn. That's my house. Okay. You have a big barn, huh? I do. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Um, and then you guys, you, you and I have actually taken a hike before. Oh yeah. We hiked in uh Sulphur Springs and uh South Chagrin, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I okay. try to get there, but we, we don't get as much as I want to. I love it there, man. If, if you were to take, uh, I don't know if this, if this is good fan material or, or, you know, for your listeners, but <laughs> I'm having fun. If you were to take a picture of uh, or a video of venturing down Sulphur Springs in, I don't know if that's considered Solon or if that's Bentleyville. It's Moreland Hills. Just, it's Bentleyville. It's actually everything. Every, it's literally all of kind it. Kind of all of it. It's all you of it. Would, if you just showed video and you, you showed somebody said, where do you think that is? You know, I think they'd think it's someplace exotic. Uh, yes. And you're like, no, that's Cleveland, Ohio. It's, yes. it's on it's the Cleveland waterfalls. Metro Park. They're yeah. technically Cleveland Metro Parks. How about that? Yeah. The waterfalls and, and, and the things, you know, uh, we actually brought, we brought our women's team there during uh, the beginning of school and they were going down the, the tubes on the, on the, uh, one of the part. Oh, where is that? One of the, I forget which which one that is. But uh, oh, you're talking Quarry Rock, which is Quarry Solon Rock, Road. yeah, Solon Road. <laughs> yep. Then there's Squaw Rock. There's Quarry Rocks up. Yep. They're all like that that branch of the chagrin. Man, I'll tell you what, we love it here, man. I I yeah. I was raised in boring, flat Northwest Ohio, man, and it is like a different world when you come here. Seriously, like what you said. Man, where where are you at? You know, because I post some yeah. stuff. And I'm always on my like Insta. Where where is that? Will you take me there? And I'm like, yeah. We go there, and people are like, this is really cool. Yeah, like, and you're 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 in the middle of this this incredible river system, and in 20 minutes you could be at a a professional sporting event. Like that's that's Northeast yeah. Ohio. Like correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, what's the one up in um, Euclid with the big the big wall? Um, what's that one? uh i know you're talking about yeah yeah that's a really but that river gets moving too um i can't think of that one off the top of my head but there's a lot of really cool parks like that and then they got ones out in lorraine like that uh i've never been to the Lorraine ones the rain one or uh illyria one uh cascades okay Eric, that runs there all the time and we'll be like hey look at the river today you should bring your boys and <laughs> it's real cool but yeah then there's like uh you know rocky river has a cool uh valley there um off of Grayton Road. That that's a really cool spot too. So yeah, there's really cool places in Northeast Ohio that you can live that don't look like you're in Northeast Ohio, right? You know, nope. everybody thinks uh industrial wasteland, um, river that's caught on fire multiple times. That's I, I always talked about that. I'm like, I'm like, people give me crap about the river catching on fire, and I say the same thing every time. You weren't alive when that happened. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I was. But, you know, 
I oh, was you? 79 is the last time it happened. I All was. right, there you go. Yeah, I wasn't alive at least. <laughs> yeah, well, you can you can claim that, but I, I you know I just showed that to my students because we were talking about like uh, pollution control, right? Because I teach a career class and wastewater treatment plants. We we just you know we get down the rabbit hole how you and I are right now, and that's fine. But um, the the kids didn't they didn't they couldn't believe it. They couldn't like grasp it. And there's if you Google image it and it shows a boat, right? spraying like a foam onto the water because it was the Cuyahoga river was so polluted and you know, oil sits on the top. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The toxins are there lighter, right? If it's petroleum based, it's lighter. It sits on the top. And then when it becomes the metals, it, it settles to the bottom. And that's an issue. You know, we have a toxic blob North of Cleveland, right? I didn't know that. There's please. While we're talking, <laughs> It is, it's, it's heavy metals that are, that sit on the bottom of Lake Erie, just North of Cleveland, a couple miles. Oh my. Okay. And I'm, then it I'm was on the lake a lot in the summer. Yeah. It, there's a toxic, but well, it's not, it's at the bottom. You can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's at the bottom and it like moves. Oh God. Real, yeah. I'm not making that up. Cause what happened was it was starting to move towards the intake, the water intake. And once again, we talked about that in my class too. And the kid, like right now, your mind's blown. You didn't know that. Yeah, now I'm nervous. <laughs> it shouldn't be because it's something where it doesn't affect the intake of the water, and they treat the water so heavily. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would listen if there was a problem with it, you'd know all about it because there'd be massive amounts of of sick people, right? For sure, yeah. We'd yeah. know it a heartbeat, but I, I, it's crazy the proximity of things in Cleveland, Ohio. It's it's got a spread out area, but it's also got a very, you know, where you guys on your campus, what, what are you, 15 minutes from downtown Cleveland? Maybe. Not a good day. Yeah. 15. We can be, yeah. I mean, you can go down Belvoir and you see the skyline in, uh, you know, about three minutes from campus, you can see the skyline on Cedar road and essentially take that all the way. Yeah. And that's why I, I do love the location there. Yeah. We're close, close to the city where you have all the kind of the value and the benefits, but we're still suburban, um, you know, kind of have all the, the nice things of being in the away from the city too are you 10 minutes from case yeah more or less yeah same thing you know obviously traffic can time of day but yeah 10 minutes straight shot down cedar pretty much same thing 40 minutes from bw yeah probably maybe the less yeah crazy all in while yeah. i mean you've got like we just talked about there's all these schools right here man it, it's it's the best i love the location and um you know, Cleveland State, obviously, you guys you were dueling them for the longest time. Um, what's crazy for that is there's no benefit for the D1s to wrestle D2s or D3s. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, with the new, the really new system. Like that. Not I'm a fan of that. Yeah, yeah. And so what's what's nuts is I was I found these articles. When John Carroll wrestled Cleveland State in, in like the 70s, the P Cleveland Plain Dealer would have an article every day for a week like a hype article once one a day per week and you know and, and the, the i don't just i don't have the plain dealer even prints anymore but um in like the the latter days of wrestling print like you couldn't even find the box score you know but but in the 70s literally there'd be hype hype stories every day about almost like a almost like a you know per match preview uh and and, and I, I, you could take a wild guess who the uh who the writer was who wrote all those stories it was uh Pat Galvin I was just gonna say Galvin yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, he'd write all. I I found all these things. I'm like, oh my god, Pat Galvin Sia. That's awesome, pretty crazy. Man. That's so crazy. It's just like, it's changed so much, man. It's just like how quickly you know information moves, right? Like it, it just, <clears throat> it, I I can't wrap my brain around it because um, you and I we're living in our kids' world at this point, right? Yeah. Um, I, I met the. Uh, TikTok YouTube guy this week from Wisconsin Parkside. Oh, okay. Hayden Henschel. And I talked to him and he told me he's got 280,000 followers on um, YouTube and I've got like 11,000. Right. And I thought about it. Right. And, and he started, you know, he's, he's new at it. That guy's had more of an impact on wrestling in, in 12 to 18 months or however long he's been doing it. If you just look at the metrics of it. Right the metrics and the numbers and the people he reaches, he's got a couple hundred times the reach I have. 
Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's wild. And what you and I are living, you know, to the point of plain dealer written previews every week, right? And to, to Prince, not even, you know, it's dead, right? Prince dead. It's a dead, it's a dead medium, right? It's a dead media that doesn't even kids and they're not even looking at it now, right? Everything's yeah. on the Chromebook for the most part or their MacBook or whatever they're doing. But man, I'll tell you what, I'm a book guy still. I'm a, I like cardboard and paper. I like it. I, I think then it's a part of the nostalgia, I think. Right. Um, but yeah, this kid, this YouTuber, Hey, that guy can wrestle by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I think, didn't he go to, he was, I don't think he all American, but he, he was like he was first or second seed, seed last year. Yeah. He was the two seed and man, he looked really good. He's, He's the dude's the real deal. He's not just some YouTube loudmouth. He is. Uh, I'll have to watch your your video because I'm curious how somebody balances being uh, a competitor and uh, uh, a media person at the same time. Well, I can tell you that I know what he makes roughly off of his YouTube channel. He don't need to be a college student. Interesting. Huh. He does not need to be a college student, right? He's making. I, I mean. What I can see from the metrics of it, two hundred eighty thousand, um, he's probably making a couple hundred thousand dollars just off um, <laughs> Google AdSense re ad revenue, right? Oh my god! No, yeah, I mean, but I don't know what he does with each video. I haven't watched all the videos or anything. Yeah, but um, you know, he talked about that actually. He talked about what you know. He had Austin Gomez on his podcast, and he said that you know I'm not at college to be to get a degree I'm at college to wrestle and win a national title and be a world and Olympic champion. Okay. And he's like, I'm not, a, and I said, Hey, what degree are you going to get and not used? And he laughed and he said finance degree or whatever. And he's like, oh. I'm not at college to, they don't need degrees anymore, Mark. I, I know that's scary. They don't need degrees anymore. They can go and do all these different things that are internet based to the whole point of why are we even here in this conversation is you and I are living in our kids world. Yeah. I mean, hold on. We're if dinosaurs. You to, if you choose to, right? Like what we're doing right now. Yeah. We're living in our kids' world. And I just don't know if a lot of people get that and or, or they're we're resistant to change, right? Humans don't like change. And I you know, my my dad always goes off on these rants. Why do I gotta have a phone? <laughs> a wrestling match or a football game. So you're telling me well, I don't have a phone. I can't get into the game. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> oh, yeah, come on, man. I didn't make the rules. Just go to the gate and have some money and bag. I don't know. What <laughs> you know, but that's the word. He's not, my dad's not wrong though. No. I mean, I, mean, I think the key to anything is it's about, it's about uh, not, not forgetting, you know, the past, but, but, but embracing the future too. Right. I mean, I think it's your point. You'd like to read. I think that's great, but you're also on this digital stuff too. You know, you can't, I think if you go in one direction only, that's when, uh, that's when you got a problem. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, But it was interesting to talk to that kid and to, you know, see, it. he just, he had some really good insight and, but he doesn't need college. You yeah, know? that's crazy. You're selling degrees. You're marketing John Carroll. You're marketing a great private school education, right? That's that. That's what you're. That's what you're selling to. Mm -hmm. Selling Cleveland. We just gave your recruiting pitch. There. Yeah. That's right. We did. We just gave it. We just. Hey, look at your project. Yeah, I think Cleveland you know Clinic. college. College in some ways, um, which you know, there's there's some issues with what I'm about to say. You know, your your the education is not necessarily the the value of the degree, but it's it's the value of the education. Um, right. It's it's, it's being cultured, being challenged. You know, finding. You know, I, I once taught a college class and uh, I would always talk about the goal of the class is not to learn this material. The goal of this class is to, and it was, it was a business, I'd call it like basically business algebra is essentially what it was. But, um, and I'd say the point of this class is not to learn this so you can learn, use this skill. It's to understand that there's set ways of doing things that somebody expects, figure out how to do it and then apply it and no, you won't use this skill specifically, but you will use the concept of learning and, and following instruction and having a, a goal and having a deadline. That's, that's, you know, but that being said, college becomes pretty expensive if, if you're going just to be, uh, to be educated and not to have a specific piece of paper that provides you a, you know, automatic return, but things like accountants, obviously medicine, 
um, attorneys, you know, you'll always need that degree though. Well, yeah, there's just things like teaching, right? Education, you can Education, do, exactly. And I yeah. do, and I said that to the uh, Caden Henschel. I was like, "Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, I've been a teacher, right? I, but you don't. He doesn't need to do that, right? He's got a YouTube channel. He's got TikTok. He's got all these other things that are streams of revenue where he's making five, ten times what I'm making as a teacher. Um, and, and, and you know, he's balancing it with being a college athlete. He's going to the classes. They're traveling. He's cutting weight." It's an impressive thing to say the least. And man, the kid is genuine. The kid mm-hmm. was like, so I was just like telling him things. I'm like, man, you can wrestle. You're, you're good. You're really good at wrestling. I'm mean, you're, you're into this craft. You're into this. And he's like, well, thank you, man. And then you know, <laughs> the impact is so much his foot. Did he win the tournament? He did. He won. He, he beat, uh, he beat gamble from West lib in a crazy, semi-final the guy the kid can scramble that was what okay. i was impressed with. he beat gamble with a really nice scramble and then um he beat the indie dude in the finals R- rue okay. i want to say the guy's name is top 10 guy okay. so um yeah i was just super impressed with the kid but he understands the responsibility that he has um uh, you know he's not on his thing cursing a bunch yeah, yeah, yeah. uh you know he's the kid understands he's responsible how about that he's very responsible for his audience and he, he gets it. So I like that about it. That was a really impressive to me, but you and I are living in not a plane dealer world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in a plane dealer world anymore. Um, Let's talk John Carroll's women's wrestling. Let's talk lady blue streaks and uh, talk to me about how it started and give me the brainchild. And when it first came into existence as a conversation and then the steps to creating a women's program at John Carroll. Um, so I think, I mean, the very first time I, I think I ever mentioned, I've, I've had an, uh, an interest for a while. Honestly, I went to the world championships in 2011, which was in Istanbul. And I think when I came back from there, I was like, that would be cool to have a women's team. Cause I, I saw things there that I never saw to understand women's wrestling. Right. Which, which is just a matter of, I had no, I never saw anything. I never saw women's wrestling. You just hear about it and you don't, you don't really know the story. But when I was there, I was like, this is cool. Gained a lot of respect for the sport at that point. Um, but, you know, there was no, really no avenue to, to, to go anywhere with it. But in, I forget when it became uh, the emerging sport status. That was the first time I think I ever kind of like, I was like, hey, we should consider this, you know, and kind of po- poke the idea around. And then, uh, but it was really genuinely when it became, when Iowa added, when it became sanctioned in Ohio, um, in this state, you know, for the high school, there might've been like one other thing that I was able to like walk in and be like, Hey, this is, this is for real, right? When the university of Iowa, a big 10 is adding it to our state is sanctioning it. This is not this, you know, side little thing that's going on. This is the real deal. And I want to be on the, the forefront of it. Um, so that I, I it was funny because I put a post on, on my social media that it was the two year anniversary was like October 21st or 22nd. So like October 21st, 2021, sent an email, laid out all this stuff, basically, though, asking for a conversation. That conversation led to more conversations. That conversation led to meetings. I mean, the the presentation, I had this this packet. I put together, um, it was, uh, it was a lot like very detailed, broken, any, anything you could possibly ask about it. I mean, cause the universe, it's not like high school. Hey, let's just add it, see what happens. Like this is a big investment. You have to add a position. There's, there's title nine impacts. There's all these things. So they wanted to make sure it was the right choice. So that was October by July. We, we made the announcement of, of last year. We hired autumn in August and then we just started, uh, started recruiting. So our first year was, last year just recruiting um our goal was 20 to bring in 20 girls we brought in we brought in 12 plus uh plus one who was on campus already so 13 on the on the roster so what happened it says they got the emerging sports status in 2020 2021 okay so man i like to do a little research on the fly here I mean, <laughs> that's good man. yeah so yeah and then uh um you know for me 
like my motivation, like it was, I like coaching. I like, you know, and I think I'm good at coaching, you know, whether we've, we've done anything big time or not, that's, that's to be, you know, I guess in the eye of the beholder, maybe, you know, some people say I'm, I'm amazing at times. I'm like, I've accomplished literally nothing <laughs> that I wanted to do, but you know, whatever. But, uh, I think I, but at the very least, I know I, I impact kids. I impact young people. I believe in the John Carroll education. I believe in our wrestling team. And I was like, why not? Let's, let's open this up to, to ladies. Um, and also just the fact that if, if you like what you do, why not do more of it? You know what I mean? Like in your case, if you say, Hey, yeah, it's more, more work to go to a second place, but if you had fun at the first one, why not? You know? So that's kind of how I feel. So that's where we're at. We're at with, you know, and, and what, why uh, autumn, what was autumn's maiden name, by the way, autumn Gordon. So autumn Gordon and where's autumn from? She grew up in um, what I say is Lancaster. She says Lan Lan Lancaster. 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 Yeah. Lancaster. Yeah. So Sorry, right. I don't know. I say Lancaster, but that's how that's how because it, it, it is Lancaster. But <laughs> uh, they say near, Lancaster near Columbus. Her her coach was a guy named Dugan Bentley, um, who who actually was a coach at Beachwood up here for a little bit. He wrestled at Ashland. He's an All American at Ashland, wasn't he? I it, if he wasn't, he was he was pretty darn. No, he definitely was. He was Dugan okay, Bentley. Yeah, yeah. He was he was good. I mean, I yeah. think Dugan Bentley's from like Groveport, Madison. That sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> um, he Grove, Port Madison. He's probably he's, he's probably Davis. about your age. He's probably yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I that's why he's like yeah. And then uh, yeah. And then she came up. It was, everything just really random. Like uh, she's she's the perfect person for us. But I mean, some people have like asked me like, oh man, you like really you really thought this out and you did this to get her. And I'm like. No, I got lucky. Uh, you know, she was in town and she was coaching high school and, uh, you know, she just ended up being a really good, good fit for us. Uh, where do her and Nathan live? Her and Nathan Tomasella recently they, got married. They live in, uh, Shaker Heights right down the road. So they live on the east side. Wow. That's crazy. And, um, Nathan is running his club out of CDCA. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's doing that John Carroll now. Is it John Carroll? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. He Even better. Even yeah, exactly. better. He did a fall club. Uh, we haven't really. He's not doing anything at the moment, but he might do something. We might do a freestyle thing in the in the springtime. Nice. Uh, so we talk about, you know, you got thirteen girls on campus right now. You had your first event in November one on the floor where your dad won an NCAA title. Yeah. You wrestled all your home dual meets. Uh, now you're the head coach. How special was that first uh, girls dual meet? For you guys at the uh it, it's I'm getting goosebumps just just you asking it. Uh so our first it was against Lords uh out from Toledo. Uh really appreciative they came out because it's hard to get duels. That's that was literally our only head to head duel all season at home. We have a try meet, but uh um the very first match was an exhibition match. Uh we had I think nine girls wrestle. Um so eight eight matches in the duel and then one exhibition. The first match was the exhibition. Our girl won. She pinned pinned the other girl. I've never heard our gym this loud. It was insane. Like so loud, you you felt it. Like you felt the loudness. You know what I mean in your body. I mean, it was it was more packed than any any duel we've ever had. One year, uh, it was actually COVID year before COVID happened. We were pretty good. Ball the walls is pretty good. They were at our place. It was it was awesome. Duel. It was loud, packed, but this was more packed. And then a lot of a lot of like high school brought their girls and, and girls are just so loud <laughs> at wrestling matches. So it was it was insane. I mean, so just seeing that first win was was so cool, um, you know, and it's it's, uh, you know, different. It's a different type of, of memory, you know, and, and thing compared to some of the men's memories I have. But, yeah, I'll remember that forever. So, you know, it's roster driven in D2 and D3. They want mm -hmm. to have, they want you guys to have as big of a roster as you can, right? They want as Correct. many athletes on the team as they can get. That draws more students into the school. More people who are in, in, in theory will be paying tuition, room and board, right? That's kind of where it's at. This is the business model of it. But now you've got a whole nother, like you said, you love something once. Why not? Why not run it back? Do it again. Double it up, right? Yeah. 
Well, now you've got this issue again where it's going to be different though, because all of them are, because there's not going to be a bunch of divisions like there is in men's. They're going to have to all kind of wrestle in one division to start, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. And and there's some, uh, I don't know, like some, I don't know what the right word is, not confusion, but there's some question out there because uh, D3 technically has enough teams we could have our own division three championship with women's i believe we have about 60 women's teams wow so, D3 yeah it's crazy NBA does? division three yeah has I, I think it's 60 wow i mean you're, you're talking almost half of of the men's programs uh so that's um, amazing and they wrestle freestyle right it's freestyle yeah that's Which another I, thing like i love talking about this because so no one knows anything I, nobody I will knows tell anything you, I love, so here's my, here's like my day. I go to a freestyle practice and then I go to a folk style practice and I love it. I would probably hate doing two freestyles in a row or two folk styles in a row. But the fact that I get to do both is, is so it's fun. Um, and then, you know, it's, it was really interesting. I had people say to me who didn't really understand the difference and whatever at, after our duel, they go, it's so much, they go, I don't know what these rules are, but it's so much better. And, and their reasoning was, like if you're the common fan, you watch like a two minute leg ride, basically you're like, Oh, that's stunk. But they just keep bringing them up and they just keep going. And there's always something, um, you know, happening because of the, because of the freestyle rules. So, but like if, if I, I wouldn't want to pick, if you had a, if you said, Hey, we we're going to move men's to, to freestyle. I'd be mad. If you said we're moving women to folk style, I'd be mad selfishly. I love, I love doing both. It's so cool. I love it. I love that you're, you have these like really good problems. Like how are we going to draw more, you know, how are we going to draw more girls into wrestling at John Carroll? But what you do a really good job of Mark, you know, you, you already brought it up. They used to do the Florida thing and you still do the Florida thing. You do a lot of destination stuff. You've taken the teams to Italy. You travel all over the world. You'll take them to New York city. You're not scared to travel with your team and make these destination events. Do you think you foresee that? Um, in in the future of the women's program at John Carroll, starting to do some yeah. I mean, so we are taking we're taking them down to Florida. We 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 uh, I say we. I was able. I did it. I'll take some credit. Uh, I started a women's division at this tournament that we go to. Unfortunately, only only one other team bit. So it's just basically going to probably be a dual meet instead of a, a, a separate tournament. Um, but we're bringing the women down. Like, and that goes back to my point. I'm like, let's make this thing the same. Um, we're probably should have waited a year, but I'm like, no, we're starting the team. We're doing all the same stuff. So um, now that's interesting because we stay down a little longer. We do some training. So we will have to divide because we don't do hotels, you know, so the girls will stay in like a Airbnb. Um, so it'll be separate there, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're doing that. I mean, to me, like, and this is, this is kind of my, one of the things I talk about of like, if, if I were to put my, my success in coaching on, on, let's just say all Americans, how many all Americans do I get? Um, let's say we have 30 wrestlers a year. Like I'm, I'm guaranteeing myself a, a two thirds failure rate before the season starts. Right. If, if 20 guys won't all American 10 do, that's still a failure essentially, even though you'd be a pretty darn good coach with 10 all Americans. So to me, it's about like, we want to win. We want to be the best we can be, but like, we got to give something to every guy and every girl on the team. Like they they have to have, I mean, every year I have somebody, it's their first time on an airplane. Wow. You know, we always, we always ask, I usually try to get them to get a picture with a uh, pilot, uh, <laughs> you know, but first time on an airplane, um, we have people, you know, getting passports to go overseas with us. Like they've never done that before. Um, so like, yeah, providing those experiences um, and, and doing it with like, you know, these, these people who are your closest friends. And I, I tell, it's kind of funny. Cause I say this to the guys, you know, I've always said, I'm like, you'll get married one day and, and some of these guys will be standing up there with you. And now I'm like, it's kind of weird. I said it to the girls now, you know, same thing. Like you're going to get married one day and and these ladies will be up there, you know, with you as, as uh, your bridesmaid. So um, these are the kind of people you're, you're, you're meeting and spending time with. And now you get to go do these, these fun trips while hopefully still busting your butt, you know, every day at practice and trying to, to accomplish some big things too. That sticks that that goes to the point of what you said about teaching the college class, right? Like, uh, sure, learn this information, but it's about the experience. It's about gaining mm-hmm. 
actual worldliness. And that's really what you guys are are giving them. You're giving them this like full worldly experience where they're meeting these lifelong friends and people that are going to be with them through thick and thin ups and downs, marriage, divorce, right? All that stuff. It's just like crazy to think about how deep that is. And and, and that's yeah. like, like you saw the experience. I really like that. Yeah. The, that You made me think of something I'll, I'll share. I was, I was really proud. Uh, I, I say, I'll say stuff like, and I'm kind of like being a little facetious, but I, I'm not at the same time where I'll say some, like somebody will say something. I'm like, Hey, don't say that. You sound like a beta. You're an alpha talk this way. And I had, uh, I forget what it was, but one of my girls said something and she's like, like, she might've said it to me, like, Hey, don't be a beta coach. You're an alpha. And I was like, hell yeah. Like, you know, like the lesson, you know, the lesson has passed on so much that now they're saying that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, it's not to be arrogant, but it's to say, you know, you're young and you're timid, you know, the people will apologize for things that you're like, Oh, Hey, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm like, don't apologize for asking for help. Like, that's not, you know, that's not what you should do. You should be proud, be, be, be excited about stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to see the, those life lessons, even though it's, that's maybe kind of a goofy one, but, um, but again, like wrestling teaches you how to, to fight back, you know, life is dirty. <laughs> life is, is cruel, just like wrestling. And, um, all you can do is, is keep going. What's left on the men's schedule for, you You know, we've talked about the women's a majority of what we've talked about on the, so far has been about, you know, the women's program, creating a women's program, recruiting the women, um, the freestyle rules. We've talked about all these different yeah. things since you're imparting to them. And but let's talk about the men's program at John Carroll for 2023, 2024. What do you guys got going on? Um, I got to point this out. You guys take, you do a lot of challenging things. <laughs> You go to Clarion right out of the gate. You're the only D3 team there that's there in mass, right? There might be some other individuals, but you're sure. the only D3 team who puts it out there at Clarion. Why do you do that? Well, last year at the national tournament, I just felt we hadn't had enough fights all year. Like we had, you know, we'll go to a tournament. We'll have a guy get beat up in the finals, let's say, but he uh he texts his way to the finals and then gets beat up so i'm like so that in that process this guy literally did not learn how to win a match in a, a hard fought situation right um so that's just kind of one example but i said you know what let's just let's just go hard let's just throw these guys to the wolves right away and let them know what college wrestling the young guys all about and the old guys like hey you think you're you're good you know you're, you're getting beat up by a, sometimes a backup, right. At, 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 a, one of these places. Now, granted when we signed up, um, not that we necessarily ran into Ohio state and, and Michigan state, but I, those teams weren't there <laughs> the year before. Um, I think Michigan state may have moved there open. So all of a sudden, like all these Ohio state, Purdue, Michigan state show up at, at the clearing open and made it even tougher. Um, so uh. So big that, yeah, that was part of it, there. you know, that made it a little tougher, but no, I, I, it, it's, I, I kind of got away. We had previously historically done that. We got away from it the past couple of years. And like I said, at the national tournament, I just felt like, man, we, we got to like, what am I padding records? Like, am I protecting guys? Let's, let's, let's get them beat up a little bit. And then we did, uh, I, th- I thought we wrestled great. Like I really do. I think even though we only won maybe five, six matches on the day, um, maybe less than that even, but, uh, I felt we wrestled hard. These guys, we didn't, we didn't, we've got out, out like matched, but we didn't get bullied. You know, we didn't, we didn't concede. We didn't, um, you know, I, I never, no one said anything to me, but one of my coaches said like another coach came up to him and was like, you guys look good. Like that's, I'm impressed. Like you guys are, are holding your own. You're not looking like, you know, like a, a fish out of water here. Um, and then we went to case last week for their open, the Ohio intercollegiate open, which was stepped down. And then we were at Albion, um, yesterday. So, uh, which was a D pretty much a D three and it's an, uh, Juco Michigan Juco's. So I think that was good. Cause we, you know, now we're competing at our, our level, um, with some D three programs and, and we have guys, you know, freshmen placing in this tournament, things like that and, and guys winning a tournament. So it's hopefully, you know, that, that toughness paid off, but, um, and then we'll do the mountain union open in January, which is probably more like the case, you know, more so red shirts and some D twos, uh, 
but still, still tough, right? You got to get out of the division. We talk about you and I talk about the D2, D3, D1, NAI, JUCO. We talk about the levels, right? Um, a lot when, when we discuss things and how do you, how do you tell a kid, you know, every, we already know the problem. The problem is everybody thinks their kids D1. Mm-hmm. And it's just not reality. It's, it's like, and a lot of people got to learn the hard way. They got to go and get mangled for a year, right? Or a semester, they got to go and get mangled. How do you save people from themselves and their pride and their ego a little bit and have someone understand their level a little bit more? Or do you just move on from those kids and catch them on a rebound? What do you do as far as when you're trying to impart to people that we're at a very, this is probably the most competitive NCAA tournament, you know, obviously the D2 continues to grow, but you guys got the most teams, right? Sure, yeah. But how yeah, do you that, I mean, that? And there's D3 guys who, I think there's a guy on the Greco team who, um, a D3 wrestler, he's like the number one guy, the, the Rao, uh, R-A-U. Uh, Joe um, Rao, Joseph Rao. Yeah, he wrestled at Elmhurst. I think yeah. he's the number one guy right now. So he's a D three national champ. Yeah, he's uh, a world, he wrestled in the world championships. Yeah, 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 just wrestled the worlds. Yeah, that's right. He's a coach, so, at, uh, he's a coach at Northwestern. So there's D three guys going to world championships for for the USA. Um, I mean, look at Tervel Delagnev is is a D two guy. So, um, so obviously, I'm not saying that every every D three guy is going to become an Olympian, but. Um, certainly good guys come out of here. So no, to me, it's, it's, our sport is weird. And even if as a dad, you're like, Oh, I want my kid to be a state champ or all American. And and sometimes, which, which of course you do, why wouldn't you? But you also would ask, well, why? Like what's, what's, what's in it for him? What's in it for me? Like, is this just, I like the sport. And, and when you really break it down, most of the things you enjoy about the sport are, are not, um, necessarily competitive right like i mean there are people who obviously they're just they're just they belong at that highest level right they're they're multiple state champs they're they're fargo they're world team members they're for their age group that guy belongs to division one but but typically you enjoy you know having purpose in your life having friends having coaches having mentors having you know bus rides and, and competition and, and getting your hand raised so I think helping people understand that um, is, is, is part of it. Um, to your point, maybe they don't want to understand and that's okay. I and mean, there's enough wrestlers to go around, but, um, but yeah, to me, I look back and think, you know, it was important to me, probably too important when I was competing, probably focused too much on just trying to win. And um, maybe if I would have been like, Hey, this is just cool. This is fun. I get to hang out with my buddies and, go to school, get an education, get a degree. And if I could have maybe appreciated that more, maybe I would have done better, but uh, you know, and I think that's what you what really, what most people really enjoy. That's what you enjoy is, is the time with your friends. You, you know, you don't look back and go, I'm sure if you catch up with your old friends, you're not like, Oh, remember when you got that takedown? Never. With 20 seconds? Never. <laughs> you're probably talking about something stupid that can't go on this yes. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, you know, and I, I, at times I'll tell you if I'm like at the D1 tournament, let's say as, as a, uh, you know, as a fan or I'm at the worlds or something, or, you know, big event and I walk around, I feel so pathetic because I'll just be like national champ, Olympian, national champ. You know what I mean? You just, your ego just gets crushed. And then, uh, you know, so if, if that, if that matters to you as a young kid, then, then go D1. But if you're like, I just like the sport, I just like to compete. I just like to wrestle. Um, yeah, I just like the camaraderie. I mean, then you got to find the right school and the right coaching staff really is, is your, should be your priority. And it's like, I, I get to see all the levels up in my family, man. And my, you know, my nephews, that's, I get to see it that, right? Like you're saying, oh, yeah. I got a, a nephew, Ian Miller, right? Three-time D1 All-American. We know that guy's a blue chipper. We get that, right? And then I got a nephew, Wyatt. He goes to App State for two years and D one's wins D one matches. He, he's a D one guy, but his body breaks down. Right. So that's a big thing with you guys. You guys aren't, you're not grinding your guys. Like, like the Ohio state staffs grinding their guys. Cause those guys are trying to beat Iowa and they're trying to beat Penn state, Michigan. And yeah. You know, Wisconsin. yeah like we're off this week. We we're pretty much off the entire week. Uh, yes. hey, it's Thanksgiving, go home, enjoy time with your family. 
uh, keep your weight down. See on see on Monday. Yeah, they, I don't think they're getting that. I don't, I don't think they're getting that. As a matter of fact, was it Iowa and Iowa State Russell this week? Yeah, on Sunday, dude. They 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 ain't taking Thanksgiving off. I can tell you that much. Yeah, right. I think Thanksgiving's an, an overrated holiday anyway, but uh, sure. <laughs> but still, it's but you're supposed to spend time with family. You're supposed to eat right. more food, and and, and you know, in in twenty nineteen twenty twenty one year old kids, they should be doing that. That's that's normal. Um, yes, and you could be, and it's again like still be a crazy psycho and, and Russell all day every day, but it, to take three four days off is not. No, it's not, not, not going to kill you. Yeah. Oh, no. you know, and then, uh, so then I had a nephew last year. He was upstate placer in Ohio. He took a uh, fourth and D three. It's actually wild. It's actually uh, not normally how I roll, but wrestling actually hurt him for his real sport track. Oh, right? no kidding. Yeah. So, um, he, uh, he was fourth in D three in Ohio at 138 pounds. He's six foot two, right? He's big. And he, so he had to cut a lot of weight. So that became cross country season, which he ran cross country in the fall. What did the winter become cross country season? Cause he had to run five miles a day to make weight. Well, he's a sprinter. Oh, geez. Yeah. So, so that is not what you don't want. Heck no. Yeah. yeah. Bolt is not putting in five miles a day. Right. It's explosion. Yeah. So, you know, he took, and then he, okay. So last year in D2, Ohio, he took fourth in, in track in the 400 hmm. and a 49, whatever he ran, 49.5 or something. Well, now he's hitting this. He's, he's at Kent State. He walked on on the track team, but he's hitting another gear. When his coach is at, well, what's going on? What happened? Where were you in high school? What's going on? What's the dude? You were cutting a bunch of weight. You were training these long sessions. You were grinding. Yeah. It was it was not conducive to being a sprinter. And now he's finding another gear. You know, he's got a huge upside left. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's I mean, cross country is uh I think good for high school wrestling. And if if someone wanted to be a college cross country runner and wrestler, I would say there's no way. I mean, yeah. The we miles but a guy who's gonna shave off. He probably can hit the 48s and 47s in the 400 yeah. this year. But yeah, for sprinting, yeah, that's that had to be horrible. Yeah, I mean, wrestling, that's, yeah, that's yeah. why I explained that to him. Yeah, like, yeah for sure. A different sport. You were yeah. doing something that was ant what was bad. It was making you yeah. Yeah, if he was a miler or two miler, different. Yeah, sport. oh yeah, hey, yeah. Right. But like it's yeah. wild to think about it, right? I mean, they had a kid who ran a 46. They had the number one 400 guy in the country, it was from Columbus Bexley, right? Okay. I mean, wow. He's at Ohio State, but like I was just thinking about it, and that was the guy who won division two last year. Huh. Um, it, it, it's wild because normally wrestling, I'll never say that about wrestling, but in this, yeah, 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 due to the amount of weight he was that's cutting, that's, a, that's like an anomaly, or he should just total, total anomaly, right? Because yeah, yeah. I want my younger kids, my, my kids are playing basketball now, but for what they do and how they're built and who they are wrestling's way better but i'm not gonna be like hey you gotta you can't play basketball <laughs> six and seven years you gotta yeah, wrestle yeah. a lot of people think you gotta do that you don't have to do that right they'll figure it out right they're gonna yeah figure, yeah go for it they're made for it culturally it's a part of their life they'll figure that out whether they want to run that's up to them right but as far as football baseball soccer you're not gonna get a better sport for your center of gravity your body awareness explosiveness you're not going to beat wrestling for i don't sure, care. Yeah. i'll take wrestling over basketball for most everything when we're t and then the life lessons too right like i just i just don't think there's really any comparison right but they're six and seven and yeah <laughs> i'm not a, a lunatic so they got time i'm gonna hoop it up right um talk to me about getting kids on the campus and getting them to buy in, right? Like you talk about, it's a huge failure rate if we're grading each other on all Americans, right? And yeah, that, yeah. D one, literally all they care about and all they talk about. Yeah, those guys measure themselves by that. We're trying to get kids to buy into a program, become men and women now that you have a women's team, mm -hmm. and, and prepare them for the for the for life, right? That's ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to be a leader, a mentor, right? All-American, 
quality, national qualifier aces. Let's do it. Right. Sure. How do you get them to buy into the service that you're, you know, be like, being yeah, a- I mean, so I say, yeah, to the all American piece. Like I'm like, the moment you step in the room, that's all that matters. Like that's all, you know, you, this is not a hobby. This is not anything other than a mission to become the best wrestler you can be. And, and that's pretty easy to do. Um, and not easy to become an all American, but easy in my opinion, to just kind of segment that your life. I walk in this door, I'm a wrestler, nothing else. I leave, I can go back to, to reality. Um, but I mean, I think to me, it's, it's, uh, that's kind of what we, what we sell. Uh, I don't like that word too much sell, but <laughs> that is what we sell right in terms of, uh, Come on, preach, preach, preach. We preach. And yeah. You know, and, and personally, you know, as a coach, you, your, your program coaches, I think you try to be like, Hey, well, I want you to have your own journey, this, that, and the other thing. But at the end of the day, you want to be a coach because you want to mo- you want to instill your qualities that you think you can share. Right. And I think to me, I want them to like, there's a little thing. I don't talk about it a lot, but it's, it's posted on my, in my office. It just says 99th percentile. And, you know, that's, you understand that as, as a teacher, what, you know, what that means, which is, you know, basically put a hundred people in a room and, and uh, you're at the top. Right. And, and, but what I want to think them to think of is how can you view that for, for life? Like are you in the 99th percentile of life um, and, and go back to travels. Right. And not that we're comparing ourselves to other people, but we kind of are of like, have I been to more places than other people? Right. Like every time you get on an airplane and get to do something fun and exciting, know that a lot of people, a don't have the the resources or B the, the desire, or, you know, people are content just sitting around doing nothing. Um, and so we want to be in the 99th percentile of, of our accomplishments, our, our, our friendships, our journeys, our experiences, you know, um, our income. So you could say it about almost anything, I suppose. So that's kind of my philosophy and, and look at our Florida trip. Like that's an example. We're traveling, we're having fun. We're also training hard while we're down there. Hopefully our training is in the 99th percentile. Cause, cause when we are trained there, we go pretty hard. We wake up at 6am, we go running, we lift, we wrestle, we do a lot of training down there. Meanwhile, you're on the beach and you can enjoy being a place that, you know, 99 other people couldn't out of a hundred. So, um, so that's my big selling point. And I think our education, um, our education is good at John Carroll. It may be great, but it's, it's kind of a, uh, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, we've almost are, are, are good by reputation. I, I don't even know if we're actually good, but it's like people go, oh, John Carroll's a good education. I want to hire you. You get hired, you know, you get a good job. You make a lot of money. Why? You're like, cause my John Carroll education. And then somebody else needs a job to say, Hey, I'll hire you. Cause I'm a John Carroll guy. And it's, it's kind of really interesting how it works, especially in Northeast Ohio. We're everywhere. Like we're, we're all over the place. Um, you know, I'll be talking all the time with someone I've known them for years. They're like, Oh yeah, I went to Carroll. I'm like, you did, you know, you didn't, you never told me that. So, um, and it's just, and then people believe it, it helped them get them where they are and, and they want to spread that. So for me, that's a big thing that we have is, is just that network of people, um, all over the place. Um, and, and quite frankly, from a recruiting standpoint, like, I feel like a lot of, we get a lot of layups, like people like, Hey, this person is, so-and-so's friend or you know cousin or son and or daughter now and um like they come and they tell us what they like about the university before they even get here i was like oh that that's nice that makes my job easy so a lot of that is just the reputation so you are like a a fitness freak workout maniac (laughs) something like that (laughs) you see some of my videos you're, you're the most shredded dude i've seen that's in college coaching right now. Like it, it is <laughs> like you and John reader, right? John, like you guys are, you're wackos. You love to kick my ass though. <laughs> well, I wouldn't step up to him. I didn't say that. I didn't say we were going to have a match or anything. Um, I could see you doing the hundred mile race that him and Bono did though. No, I don't, I don't run. No, 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 I don't run. Don't do that. But I could see you just now you're a, you're a guy who's a, a battle of wills though. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're a guy like, oh, I just want to see if I can do that. 
You know, Jacob Casper had to inspire his one brother. Had Jacob Casper on. Okay. His brother had to do some crazy rucksack run for the Marines, or he wanted to inspire his brother, so he bought a rucksack, put fifty pounds in it, bought boots, ran around Raleigh and Durham for fit for. 30 miles just to inspire. <laughs> we took the boots off. They were soaked in blood. Right. Oh, geez. I yeah. Boots in. I could see you being like that. Maybe, maybe. Why is the physical fitness? Why have you gone to such a crazy level with your fitness? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, you want to live longer. I, we know why. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I, I just like to be active. I think I'm happier and healthier, not even, well, healthier, I guess, obviously I'm just happier when I'm on the move. Um, and, and honestly, I don't really like traditionally train or exercise that much. Um, I just, um, in the summertime, I'm always working outside. Um, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I dig a lot, uh, which is funny because my wife's like, what are you doing? Like, I'm always just doing little projects. Uh, what so, are you doing? Um, like this, yeah, this summer I, I built a, uh, I built like a fire pit area and I just literally just dug all this dirt out and move it in my wheelbarrow and my neighbors probably think I'm crazy. So I like to do the stuff like that. That keeps me active. Um, I also describe it's like, I'm pretty, if you see on like Instagram, I'll post videos of me climbing stuff. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Actually. I'm like, I describe myself as, as one of the most elite athletes in things that have no relevance. Um, <laughs> climbing so, a rope with your legs extended out. Yeah. Yeah. Like if there was a, if there was an Olympics for things that nobody would care about, I, I might, I might win a gold medal. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. Like, and it's uh, like, like, I'm not good at like, say like basketball or, or like soccer, or like stuff like that. I would be horrible. I was okay. And as a kid at baseball, but I feel like everybody is okay at least. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty good at like doing weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah, climbing stuff. And it's yeah, amazing. Actually. We grew up, we had a rope, a climbing rope in my house, in my parents' house. Um, so like, and they, we, they had a vaulted ceiling and my dad put a, a climbing rope, like, just inside our house, like, like not, not in like a workout area, but just in a main room and we would just climb it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I got pretty good at that and, uh, still pretty good <laughs> at it. We did like hand grippers a lot. So I'm pretty good at like grip stuff and, and climbing things. Yeah. I love it. Uh, ultimately, what do you want? What impact do you want autumn Tomasello to have on John Carroll women's wrestling? And how do you want to mentor her? And what what do you see your um, coaching relationship and then student athlete relationship being um, that you can help impart to her to help others, you know, like you do? Yeah, I think, I mean, right now she has a, a, a luxury of sorts that I, I take care of a lot of the BS. So I do all the paperwork, I do all the scheduling, you know, so I really want her just to kind of, um, honestly just be yourself and enjoy enjoy coaching um because uh she can do the not not that it's all easier because that's not the right word but you know she can do the, the stuff that we all sign up for right nobody signs up you know you get people who become coaches and, and then they go oh my god i don't coach like i, I spend 99 percent of my time not coaching and one percent of my time coaching and so I really, I think she, her connection with the girls, her knowledge, her ability to communicate, not just wrestling information, but, uh, life information. Um, you know, I want her to be able to just be herself, um, where I think I'm, I am helping her or can continue to help her is, is, uh, a lot of young coaches who were, were highly ambitious, I think struggle with, um, people who weren't, who weren't aren't like we were at that age, right? You know, if you were real responsible, you're real go-getter and you, you're kind of dealing with maybe an athlete who's doesn't have those qualities, um, you know, having some patience and understanding that um, they're not all, you know, they're not all like us. So, um, but no, I mean, she's, yeah, she's been doing great as far as those things go. Um, her, her, her freestyle is, is pretty, pretty top notch. Um, I mean, there's things like, I, I'm not, a, I can teach a leg lace. I'm just not a gut guy. Um, so she does all her gut work and I'm like, oh, how do you do that? Show me, show me what you're doing there. Um, so, you know, she's, she's top notch with all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, gut wrenches is like a half Nelson. It's the number one turn. Yeah. 
uh, wrestling, you got to have a good gut wrench. I mean, or if you don't, you got to find someone who does, right? Well, yeah, gotta, yeah. I mean, I probably could have. That's a building well, I know block. That's like, but like <laughs> that's like that's like Nelson and folk style. It's not my thing. Know that. Um, but yeah, she's she's you know she's phenomenal and with her technique, she's phenomenal with with her attitude. Um, and you know she had to figure out recruiting because I think it was important for us to have a, a female doing the recruiting, um, at least the lead. And so that's a hard adjustment, you know, to come in and just start making phone calls. And she's been doing pretty good and. We've been a pretty good, I think, uh, duo working together on that. I love it, Coach. Love it, man. I, I'm like excited to come and get to an event and see what you guys got going on this year. Yeah, December 10th is our next. Uh, so December 10th is a try meet. Uh, the men have two matches. The women have two matches at the same time. So that'll be cool. Our first ever uh, event at John Carroll with both men and women. Um, and then uh, – and that's it for the women at this season at home. Well, we have our open, but that don't count that really. Gotcha. I love it, man. Um, you got anything else for me? Anything else for you? Oh man, put me on the spot. Uh you don't know. You can say, "Hey Zeb, we made this happen tonight." I, no, I'm good. I want to get ready and focus on Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, no, we're going. We're uh. Going to Ogle Bay tomorrow. So yeah, that's our little annual Thanksgiving trip. So where is that? Ogle Bay. It's it's oh uh, here, I'll, I'll finish with a good story. Uh <laughs> if you ever go to Ogle Bay, it, Ogle Bay, Ogle Bay, it's Wheeling, West Virginia, basically. Um, and it's a it's a essentially a golf resort, ski resort. And so it's kind of the off time right now. And they have Christmas lights, tons of Christmas lights. Um that you drive, you literally drive through and just they have music and just, you know, miles of Christmas lights. But, uh, we were there last year and I found out there's like a, uh, a golden palace hidden in the backwoods of West Virginia, right outside of Wheeling. And it was like a, um, what it's called like the Hare Krishnas. They built a, uh, palace in West Virginia in like the seventies, um, or maybe it was the eighties. And, uh, I was like, we got to go. And so we went and, uh, it's pretty interesting. So I, I, it's called new, new something, but look, just type in gold, go on your phone, look up golden palace. Wheeling, I'm West very Virginia. Here now. And yeah, are you going to do it right now? Yeah. And, oh, uh, oh, oh yeah. You don't get to, I, that. I'm going to forget about and have to take, no. Golden and, palace wheeling. Oh, oh my goodness. What? <laughs> what? what? Yeah. What? It's crazy. It's, oh my gosh. What's it called? New something. McCreary's Ridge Road, Palace of Gold, Moundsville. McCreary Ridge Road, Moundsville, West Virginia. There you go. And it turned out that, and then we found out, she was like, why'd you take me here? My wife was, and I was like, because I had to, you know, you don't find out there's a that, golden palace. That's it? Yeah, yeah. Oh my, that's in West Virginia? Yep. You're just driving it through like up and down hills and winding roads, and all of a sudden you see this palace. And uh, it was like a big wall. Dude, and it's amazing. I'm like looking at it. It's got it, a it's, big pond. It's, it's run down now, but um, turns out there was like murders and stuff there. And so no, you know, they tend course. to frown upon murders at your in your grounds. And so there was uh, there was like a I think it was a you we couldn't find it anywhere, but it was on YouTube. It was like a little like hour long special about the murders that happened there. So. Um, so I watched it that night after. Yeah, you know what there. it's called? It's called Wrong Turn. Have you ever seen those movies? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't watch them. Don't show those to anybody before you go tomorrow. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. So anyway, that would be my 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 uh my advice to anyone out there. Go to uh go to uh Ogilvy and and the uh, Golden Palace in Wheeling, West Virginia. That's where we'll be. To, uh, well, we won't go to the palace again. That I was I was banned by my wife to ever go again so oh and uh God. yeah come see us december 10th february 15th we're at home and uh appreciate what you do zeb it's it's awesome to have uh someone who uh does so much for the sport so thank you thanks man i appreciate it hey thank you for being patient with me you and i were bopping back and forth. i can't so you can't yeah. <laughs> thank you for playing the phone tag and the yeah the no i love coming me, on man. i appreciate your patience coach haywald Thank you for coming on the Go Ohio Cash podcast. This is the uh, Go Ohio Cash podcast. You've been on yep. Barbar Barbarian Hours just right there. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh, you just shift I mean, the camera just like that. It's New real tough, right? It's, real <laughs> tough. it's all smoke and mirrors here, right? Yeah. Like Steven Spielberg. I mean, 
And then I'll have another one where I'll, I'll have a, I'll have another wall. I mean, it's just, I'll, it's, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy peasy. Kent state wrestling one. I do a Kent state wrestling one. We oh, do nice. all types of them. So coach Haywald, thank you for the time. Stick around. Yeah. And we will hopefully see you December. What time does it start on December 10th? I think it's noon. I'll, I'll double check though. Coach Haywald, thanks again. All right. Thanks, Sam.